Hey you guys, it's Josh with Homesteading Family. And uh, today is a day that we would usually be releasing a pantry chat. And I know that you guys, a lot of you are waiting for this one because we're going to be talking about meat birds, meat chickens, and uh, raising them and just the way we go about it. Butchering a whole bunch of stuff with meat chickens. And you know, we just didn't get to it this week. It is crazy around here this week. Carolyn was finishing planting up her cottage garden. And I don't know if you guys saw the video on that, um, but she got her video out of talking about what she's got in the cottage garden. Um, we'll put a link to that at the end of this video here. And uh, we've got plumbers, electricians here right now, uh, working on the basement, getting the preserving kitchen ready, both for our own use for preservation this fall, but also for filming Carolyn's upcoming canning class, which we're really excited about. We've got construction and concrete pouring going on on mom and dad's house. We had the sheep come in this week. Uh, we've got meat chickens coming in next week and we've still got to get ready for that. So there is just a ton of stuff going on around here and we're just not getting to the pantry chat real quick. Um, we're just not getting to the pantry chat this week. So I'm just taking a few minutes. Carolyn couldn't make it here today. The kids are in a VBS program and just lots of running around on top of it all. And uh, so I'm just gonna do a quick update and do a quick garden tour. We haven't gotten in the garden a little bit. I've got a couple of upcoming videos on, um, I know the next one's gonna be on mulching, um, but we haven't gotten in there. So I'm just gonna take you on a quick tour of the garden. We'll catch up for a few minutes and we will get back to the regular pantry chat, hopefully next week. So um, let's go check out the garden. Okay, here we go. The garden is coming along really nicely. Uh, it has been, I mean, it's always kind of can be crazy weather here in North Idaho, but it has really been up and down and challenging. We've had uh, still getting frosts and, uh, and yet getting uh, 90 degree days. So um, it's been interesting. Uh, the raspberry patch here, if you guys remember. Oh, and hey, for, for those of you that don't know, um, or that have just come onto the channel in the last couple of months. We bought a place, a new place in the fall, and uh, it had great infrastructure. All this fence garden was here. There's fruit trees, berries, there's just so much cool stuff. But uh, the folks that put all this together got older and it just got neglected. Uh, soil got compacted in organic matter. Uh, they used some different uh, chemical fertilizers and herbicides and maybe pesticides. And uh, so there's a lot of work here to reshape this place and kind of get it back to its former glory, but um, in an organic um, method. So uh, I'll post, a, I'll link to a couple of videos for those of you that haven't seen them about where we started with this garden. And you can check that out if you want. But here's the uh, raspberry patch. It's actually doing really good. If you remember, we had to take out about 75% of what was here, thin it out, and, um, and but it's coming back. It's not gonna do a ton this year. You can see on this side, everything's a little thin, but um, it is gonna come on up, up toward the front. Some reason on this side, these plants were healthier. Uh, maybe they were getting more water in the past. We don't really know but um, they're doing great and it's gonna come on fine and next year this will do great as we continue to mulch, mulch it and care for these guys. And uh, here's the main garden. You can see it is cranking along, doing really, really well. Uh, we've got a couple rows of onions going here and uh, peas in the background. The peas are having a tough time. Like I said, you know, the peas, if you know, they like cooler weather. And uh, they're enjoying the mornings, but then we've been hitting high 80s and 90s during the day. And um, they aren't super stoked, but it is pushing them to flower. So hopefully they'll do okay. And uh, we're, we're happy with them for first year, even though uh, we not get, may not get super high production. Um, let's see. Here's our chards, spinaches, uh, eating off of these. And for you guys that are new again um, we've been eating out of the garden now here in north idaho since at least the first of may a little bit early that's really good for fresh eating up here that's uh, mostly because of the greenhouse and then early planting out here currants we've never had currants before we're excited about them you can see we got a few issues here we're going to need to figure out um, but these currants are all doing great. Even some gooseberries down there. 
Um, we did a lot of mulching on these beds, trimming these guys back, and we're really excited. They're just looking good, and, and my goodness, look at the, this whole bush is just loaded with fruit. So we're gonna have a lot of current jam. What else? Ah, blueberries here, they're not so great. Couple we transported in pots and didn't get in the ground. Um, blueberries are a little tough up here, but we'll figure them out. Grapes are coming along pretty good. They survived the really, really cold weather. As I said, you can see the peas and you can see the tops. They're just, it's just been getting too warm for them. But we've got a long row and I think they're gonna do okay. Potatoes, on the other hand, are absolutely stoked. They have come up just uh, righteously, just fantastic, doing so, so well. And um, we've got, uh, these are our red potatoes right here, which seem to be the happiest. Uh, we do a layering method, kind of like a root stout method, but I have not been able to keep up with them. They have grown so, so fast. And uh, then they change, they go smaller. These are Yukon Golds. Seem to be doing uh, second best as far as growth. We don't know what's going on underneath, but uh, they should all do well. And uh, these are just some regular russets, but uh, they are very, very happy. And uh, we got all the uh, seed potatoes from a lo local organic grower. So uh, we know they should do real well. Nice row of carrots coming up there. And one of our strategies, just a tip for growing a lot of food, is we plant very, very densely. Same with the beets here, as you see. And, um, and then we thin as we go. What that does, like the beets, we have lots of greens that we can mix in with the chards and spinaches and lettuces. And then we'll get baby beets and we'll keep thinning those. And then that'll allow the beets to grow uh, larger. And so we'll have a fall harvest. And that keeps us just saying beets all through the season. We'll do the same with spinaches, chards, um, carrots similarly. Uh, we're, we're not eating the tops off the carrots, but we'll do the same thing as they start to grow in. We'll harvest the baby carrots and let them fill in. You really gotta build your soil up for this, but uh, it really adds to the production of your garden and keeps you in fresh eating for a longer portion of the season. Yeah, you can see these uh, beets look like they're about ready for some water. A few parsnips in here. We really like the parsnips. And uh, they're coming along pretty good. A few turnips we threw in. And uh, we've got a little bit of a flea beetle problem. And we were able to save these guys using a little bit of ash and diatomaceous earth. Yeah, and, um, but flea beetles up here is pretty much our one nemesis, our one pest that's a constant uh, up in this area that we've dealt with. This bed here, we do succession planting. So this whole row, we plant once a week. So you can see this first week of growth right here. We really need to harvest the spinach. There's spinach in here. There's some cilantro that uh, another week or so, it'll be ready. The spinach is ready, real dense lettuce. And that's the end. And then there's the next week. And you can just see the beds. And this will give us eight weeks and we'll come back and do a second round so that we'll be eating fresh all the way into mid-October. And this was the last seeded bed. And we like to keep this bed under landscape cloth. What that does is it keeps the soil warm. It also germinates any of the weeds that are on the surface in there and then uh, kills them back. And so then we just peel this back as we go along and, and reveal the next se section for next week. All right, peppers. We had a tough time with peppers starts in the greenhouse with all the erratic weather. Um, so we've got a mix of some store-bought peppers because we really like them along with our little baby starts. They are probably not gonna do a whole lot, but um, we'll see. We're gonna give them a try anyways. They just, with the, with the cooler weather this spring in the greenhouse, they just didn't get up. We've also got some okra. Trying a shorter season okra, that is really hard to do. That's the okra right there. That's tough to do up here, but um, we're trying it. We like a little diversity in the bed and we like okra. So we're gonna see what we can do. All right, these are our summer squashes. Should be some zucchini in here, 
some scallops, some yellow crooknecks. Yeah, and don't do a whole ton of these, but uh, you know, they give us some good meaty, fresh eating early in the season. And they're all doing real well. And then I don't know if you guys saw the photo, I probably haven't talked about this much, but these are, are uh, primarily a bean tunnel. You can see this row, I haven't finished mulching yet, but we do these tunnels where we'll grow beans up the outside and then inside growing some of the brassicas, so cabbages, uh, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, um, and that will shade them when we get into the real heat of the summer and allow those guys to do all we do well also gives them some cover from the flea beetle, believe it or not. And it gives them a little protection there. This uh, row is tomatoes, cucumbers, tomatillos. Um, tomatoes without a greenhouse up here have been hard to get to fully ripen, but we're gonna give it a go. We'll probably turn this actually into a type of hoop house next season. Uh, so that we can warm it up a little bit but we're going to give it a shot and if nothing else we can uh, ripen the tomatoes in boxes if you guys haven't seen that done i'm sure we'll uh, show you in the fall as we get there and these beds are primarily our corn and squash our winter squashes so uh, we've got quite a bit of corn and winter squash just coming up. These just got planted about a week and a half ago. Everything is doing great. Uh, this is one of the funnest spots in the garden for me here. Uh, I've been experimenting with planting more diversity within a single bed, getting away from monocropping or single species planting and seeing how much uh, I can plant together, how densely and how many different species not just varieties but different species i can plant so in these beds i think we've got at least four we've got corn winter squash sunflowers and amaranth um might have put some dill in here as well but these all do really good together uh the diversity is great for bringing in the pollinators for shading for feeding the birds also, when you have a diversity of root structure in the soil, that is gonna help develop a healthy uh, soil food web and your microbes in your soil. And um, so this is an experimentation for me over the years and uh, this one's really fun to do and just gets to be an absolute jungle that is highly productive. So it'll be fun to show you guys that later in the season. And uh, so if you remember a couple months ago, this was all under pl plastic and compact dirt. It's been a lot of work, but I am just super, super excited. Uh, this garden is just turning out fantastic. Uh, obviously we'll see how it all produces in the end, but it has just been great progress. One more thing that's really exciting is while we do have some fruit trees here, we are gonna be planting out at least an acre orchard, probably a sec several acres over the next five to 10 years. And so this is our first batch of trees, a uh, bunch of apples, some stone fruit, pear back there. Uh, these are some thornless honey locusts, which we'll use a lot of here. Um, obviously not for fruit, but for shade and for their good nitrogen fixers. We can chop and drop these and make mulch and compost out of them. A whole lot of good uses for the locust trees. There's some black locust in there too. A few leftover cabbages. And then all those small trees, which are coming from a local nursery, uh, who we're going to have on a pantry chat, a friend of mine, Casimir Haleski, who's just awesome guy, knows his trees. And um, he's got some great knowledge to share. So hopefully, if he's willing, uh, we'll get him on for a pantry chat to talk about fruit trees uh, sometime this summer. And this is going to be our nursery. You can see I've had the B putting the BCS to work, getting this little tree nursery shaped up. So all those trees you saw will go in here uh, in the next week. And then they will stay and get planted out next spring. And then next spring, we'll bring another batch into the nursery. It's... Uh, it's actually a very economical way. Instead of buying three or four year old trees, we can buy one year old trees and grow them out here in the nursery. So we're paying a lesser cost and then transplant them. Uh, and these are a couple chestnut trees. We're gonna be doing a lot of nuts here. Chestnuts, uh, a couple different types of walnuts, hazelnuts, filberts, and I think we're gonna maybe even try some almonds. So that will be exciting stuff. 
kids garden you've probably seen a little bit on the wattle fence that they did so cool um, they put this together and they've got several of their gardens in there and of course you hear me say it whenever I'm talking about the garden and I'm talking telling them mulch your gardens do not leave your soil naked and uh, so we got to get these guys mulching but they've got a great start they've uh, gotten all the rocks out shaped their beds composted and got uh, starts planted so every kid's got a garden space and they just get to get out here and have fun it's fun to see the different creativity that uh, each person does in their own take on things so really really fun greenhouse is kind of dormant right now it's gotten really hot in there so uh, we probably won't uh, do anything with that until late summer when we start putting in some crops that will take us into winter and that's about it guys here's the uh strawberry bed it's doing well didn't harvest any asparagus this year but we got a lot of crowns planted and so this can just get established and next year this is gonna do great all right well hope you enjoyed that uh quick tour this is just a really really exciting space for us it's a first year garden and those are always tough. You can't have too high of expectations as you're learning your location, your microclimate, your soil, and, and even the uh, you know, different species and varieties that are gonna work well for you. And uh, coupled with that, we um, went to, we bought a lot of our seeds from a newer seed company, one we're familiar with, but one that's more regional and local. And so we're testing out a lot of their varieties here as well. And so far it's looking great as you can see. And this is just gonna be really, really fun uh, to watch it come along and see what we can produce here in this first year garden. That is it. Sorry we missed you on the pantry chat, but we will look forward to catching up with you on the next episode. Um, thanks you guys for watching, for hanging out with us and taking part in this journey and being part of our homesteading family. Uh, please don't forget to uh, share and like, leave any comments, questions, things you guys want to know more about, and we'll do our best to cover it in future videos. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.